Welcome to The Sculptor's Apprentice, where you learn how now. And now your guide on this epic journey of learning, E. Spencer Schubert. Hi, I'm Spencer with The Sculptor's Apprentice. Thank you for being here today. Today, uh, I'm going to talk to you about the 3D pantograph. The 3D pantograph is a machine that we use to enlarge sculptures or help us enlarge sculptures. It doesn't do the work. Um, if you have any comments or questions, if there's anything that's not clear about what I'm talking about today, don't post those comments on the YouTube page because I won't see them. Post them on the sculpturesapprentice.com page for this video. You can find that link in the description of this video on YouTube. Also, if you want to follow us on Instagram and see the latest things that are happening in the studio, it's ES Schubert Sculpture. Um, so thank you for that. Now let's dive into, oh, one more thing. Uh, I need to say thank you to somebody, Jason Arkles of the Sculptor's Funeral Podcast. Um, a discussion with him is kind of what got me back into doing these videos, which I think are really useful and I enjoy doing them. So um, if you haven't listened to that podcast, you absolutely should. It's incredible, wonderful art history, uh, basically art history class for figurative sculptors. Jason takes you all the way uh, from the beginning of the Renaissance you know, up until now and a great discussion about historical figures and why we are where we are today because of the history. So, um, now let's talk about the pantograph. The 3D pantograph is basically a measuring device. It's an enlarging machine. It, it takes points off of a small maquette and tells you where in space they will be at the larger version. So, um, it's basically just got three, four moving parts and I'll talk to you about those right now. So, the whole um, process is, is based on geometry. So this is a, a one-third scale of the final product, right? So it's very important to get this exactly right. You know, if, if it's important that the final piece be 100 inches tall, then this one has to be exactly one-third of that if that's how you have the machine set up. So um, really, at its simplest form, all the pantograph is is an arm that has two pointers connected by a parallelogram with joints at the four corners. So there's a pivot here, a pivot here, and then there's a pivot here and a pivot here, right? And so what those pivots do is allow these, um, these two pointers to move and maintain their parallelism. Is that a word? I don't know. I just made it up. Um, and so, so that, coupled with the fact that the length of this pointer is exactly one third of the length of that pointer is really how the points start to take shape. Now they're mounted on this boom arm and this, this pantograph has uh, geared turntables. So basically this turntable, if I turn it, for every one unit of measure that this one moves, that one moves one unit of measure as well. And that's where you get the third dimension. The pointers give you the, the first two dimensions and then that turntable action lets you get the full round. So, the way it's set up right now, from the center point of this universal joint right here, this pivot, to the center point of this pointer is 50 inches. So that's one unit of measure. So from the center point of this pivot again, all the way down here to this pointer is 150 inches. So that's three units of measure. 50 into 150, three times, we have a one to three enlargement. Uh, that one to three measurement is consistent throughout the entire machine when we're doing a three times enlargement. So, 50 inches, 150 inches, and then I believe that this is 14 inches, and that pointer is three times 14 is 42, right? So that's 42 inches. From the exact center line of this beam, so not to the edge of the beam, but to the exact center that runs right through the center of this beam. Same, with the two turntables. So from the center of this universal joint right here to the center of that first turntable is also 50 inches and then it's 150 inches to the center of the next turntable. So really once that's set and I use a laser level mounted on the wall over there to get everything exactly right and it takes about a full day of tweaking to get the machine just perfect. Once that's set, when I take this pointer right here and I point it at any place on this maquette. So let's get a close up of this when I point it. Let's see. Let's just take, for example, one of these knuckles up here, right? So I'll put the pointer right there on this knuckle, right there, see? Just resting on the surface. And then if you look at the large pointer over there, that's telling me exactly where that knuckle will be three times in all three dimensions. 
Now, one thing that's a little unique about the way I'm using it this time is that this is a clay original. Um, just as an experiment, I decided to try to enlarge from this clay original um, on, this, on this project. I won't do it again. I thought it might save some time. As, you know, usually I make a mold of the maquette, cast it in a resin, so I have a durable maquette over here. Um, I thought it might save some time with the mold making and the casting process, but really any time that I saved uh, in that process, I'm having to spend by being careful with the clay maquette because it's just not quite durable enough. So you experiment, and sometimes the experiments fail. Um, but that's why this is a clay original right here. Now, what we have on this side is the foam enlargement. And so inside, and I'll show, you'll see this in the time-lapse uh, video. Inside this foam enlargement is a steel armature. And since this is a relatively simple shape, the steel armature is really just a two-inch square tube, some chicken wire in strategic places, and a few um, quarter-inch round bars for the fingers. Um, and then on top of that is sprayed spray foam. This is just a urethane spray foam, the same spray foam that they would use to insulate your house. Um, and this really kind of helps us bulk up the statue. So let's look at that time-lapse video right now, and then I'll come back for a second. So you can see here the main armature is just a two-inch square steel tube. And then I'm building up the chicken wire around it. And really, that's just to tie the foam into the steel uh, square tube uh, so that when we spray the spray foam on that, it's going to stick to that, and that's tied to the armature. Otherwise, that foam would just kind of be floating there. Um, and then it's always nice to be a little clean and orderly. So here we are spraying the spray foam, and you see it goes really quick. Um, that spray foam expands when you spray it on. And actually, it's, the hard part is making sure you don't spray too much on because then you end up carving it all down. So at this point, I think everything is sprayed on, and now the trick is to start trimming back to one inch below the final clay surface, because I like to have at least one inch of clay on top of the foam. So if you see the little black dots that are starting to show up, those are dots that, if they're a little X, that means that there's one inch between the um, final clay surface and the foam. And if they're bigger than that, I'll, you know, we'll write a two or a three, which says that it's two or three inches below the surface right there. So at this point, it's just about you know, three hours of carving, measuring and carving and measuring and carving and measuring and carving. And you can see I'm constantly looking to the right, looking at the pointer and where it's pointing and checking the pointer on the large sculpture just to make sure that everything is still lined up. And now it's time to clean up. And we're almost done. Okay, so that's the first uh, of, I don't know if it's gonna be two or three videos, we'll just have to see. Hopefully that made a lot of sense. Again, questions, comments, leave them on the sculptorsapprentice.com page for this video. You can find that link right down below in the bottom in the description. Um, follow us on Instagram, it's ES Schubert Sculpture, and we will see you soon when this thing is done. <laughs>